Good morning, everybody. Good day, all. <laughs> and it's a beautiful day here in Arizona. It's a gorgeous day. So, for the last two days, we have been at the Twin Arrows Casino parking area where they allow free camp uh, overnight stays. Yep. They haven't really said how many days you can stay here, but to be, you know, courteous, you want to only stay maybe a couple days, I right. think. And yesterday we had plans to leave this uh, parking lot. We were only going to stay one day and we got ready to go and I had a vertigo attack. So I don't know if you call it a vertigo attack, but I got vertigo really bad. <laughs> I had to immediately lay down and so there was no driving yesterday at all. And um, so today our plan is to finally get where we were going to go yesterday. Yeah, which, which is, is the Walnut, Wal Walnut Canyon. Walnut Canyon. Yep. And there are some cave dwellings there that we are going to go check out. And then we are going to Flagstaff to do a few things. And then from there we are going to Williams, I believe. Yep. That actually, that's the plan. That's the plan. Or we're going to cut up. Here comes Sharon. Um, that's the plan. And then what we're going to do is cut up and go to the Grand Canyon because that's uh, we want to make sure we see that before we go anywhere else. And let's see, Sharon's on her way over here to say hello. So hang on. Do you want to say good morning to everybody? Good morning, In YouTube everybody. land. <laughs> <laughs> we were just telling him we're getting ready to head out and you guys are going to meet us somewhere else. Yep. Right? Yeah. Okay. You're so doing we'll talk good? About, yep, I'm doing okay. much better today. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go and uh, we'll see you guys on the road. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here Well, we made it to Walnut Canyon. Look at how gorgeous that is. And we are going to go right over there, down that trail. And that's going to lead us where, Aj? to the cave dwellings. Okay, we're going to go down and see. See that center piece right there that the canyon goes around? Right. There's cave dwellings all through there. All right, so that's where we're going to take you guys. This is really beautiful. So before we take a walk down into the canyon to see the cave dwelling area, we're going to take the rim trail first. I don't know if we're going to do the whole rim, but we're going to at least go down and check it out. And they've got some areas marked off here of, um, oh, how they used to farm in this area. And I'm not sure what else is down here. Aja's already been on this trail, so you can go check out her video as well. And Aja, what is, what is the rim trail? It's basically where they did their farming. Okay, so here's how it was. They actually, all the dwellings are down on the um, side of the mountain or the canyon. And then that, there's a bunch on in the center. And then here's where they farmed and they also cultivated like wild plants and stuff. Yeah, so really neat. So we're just gonna take a look down here and show you guys a little bit. Farming on the Rim, the Walnut Canyon Gardens, or garden. All right, guys, you'll have to slow this down if you want to. I cannot read that because I didn't bring my glasses. So just slow it down if you want to look at it. And the sun is on the back side of me, so hopefully you guys can see that. I would think that they probably had some bigger gardens than that. Uh, depending on how many people lived in the uh, area. But like Aja was saying, uh, they did do... Uh, they they harvested wild plants? Yeah. Well, they used them... Not all of them were used for eating. I mean, they used them for other things. Medicines and stuff. Dyes. Yeah. Uh, needles, medicines. I bet this is it. Mm -hmm. It's just dried up right now. I don't think it's a season for it. Oh, that's it right there. Yeah. That's the same oh, thing. I it's see. just dried out. Oh, I see. 
it's kind of hard to tell what plants they're talking about because everything's pretty spent up here. It is uh, coming into winter time and it's kind of hard to to see because everything's kind of brown and dried up. But very interesting. So this is the first viewpoint and then there's one more. Yeah, it's really really amazing views up here. Well, you can see where we're going to start our trek down into the canyon. And it goes all the way over to those stairs over there. God, what a canyon. Jeez. Wow. Is that amazing or what, guys? You know, maybe they were over... So right below us, you can't see, but when we get start to descend down the stairs, there are um, cave dwellings along here. Wow. So see, they probably just climbed up. They didn't have to go from way over there to come up here to tend to their crops. Right. I'm sure the farmers lived along this side, and then thus, um, what you call, like, the city would be the main part of it here. Right. I wonder if they did a lot of the terracing, too. I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, you look at the land, it's like terrace, terrace. I mean, what an awesome place over there to have grown your, your vegetables. Well, I think stuff. a lot of it is natural, and oh. then they just built onto it. Oh, yeah. Well, our next little lookout that we're going to is way over there. And I'm going to tell you, this is very wheelchair friendly. It's all paved up on this rim section. Not so sure about the other place because there are stairs, but we will go in the visitor center and see what they say about that. Canyon has a bunch of animals, but no turtle, it says. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the <it's> turtle. <laughs> well, Scotty's right. It's they've got bobcats, badger, gray wolf or gray fox, mountain lion. Ooh, black bear, coyotes, and prairie dogs. Oh, the prairie dog is so vicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the meanest one. He might be, actually. You never know. He might attack. Ooh, right in your Can home. He? He'll nibble on your big toe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we were kind of wondering what these plants were. They're the banana yucca. Beautiful day, no complaints. One thing I should mention is that we do have Moo Moo with us, but she's only allowed on this part of the trail. Uh, the lower trail, when you go down to the canyon, uh, you cannot have puppies down there. But on this trail you can, as long as they're on a leash. Okay, so you can see the cliff dwellings right there, if you zoom in. Right there. Mm -hmm. And what they what it was is it's where the uh, rocks stuck out and made a shelter, and they took smaller rocks and builded rooms. Wow! I have to say it's the first Did time. Did I say build it? You built. They built, built. it. It's okay. <laughs> oh, you can see the people walking along yeah. the top of the um, oh, yeah. ridge there. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get over there eventually. So right down there are where the other. Uh, dwellings are in the gully there. So we just did this upper loop and you can see the caves all along the uh, rim of the walls. It's pretty awesome. So we're gonna go back over to the visit se visitor center and walk down the trail and uh, go check them out in person. All right so we're right here. We just did this little walk here, the rim. Aja went off and she went through this way, so she probably has filmed some of this. So you want to go over and check out her channel and see if she's got that on there. And then the parking lot's right up in here. Now we're going to go and do the island trail. Not sure how long that is. We may not make all of it because uh, we do need to get on the way, but uh, we'll get as far as we can. At least down to see one of the... Um, living quarter areas that they did down there and let's see that just tells you about the rim trail so we are at the visitor center 
which is just right off of that trail. And we're going to go ahead and walk in here and check it out. Some good general information that you should know if you're going to come to the area. Uh, open daily 9 to 5, and the, cloak, the park is closed December 25th. So I guess not any other holiday except that. And the Island Trail closes daily at 4 p.m. I think they're very serious about that because it says hikers must be off trail at 5 o'clock. And that's what time the park closes. And you can do the rum trail up to 4.30. All right, well, let's go in and check it out and see what they got in here, and then we'll get on our hike. All right, guys, we are in the visitor center, and you know how much I love to talk about this. Look at this. This is amazing. So they've got wheelchair accessible here. Go ahead and get in there. And then, of course, I'll go down this way. And then they've got access so you can go all through the visitor center. And then you can go on over here. Get on in here. Your wheelchair. Come on down here and check everything out. And then, look at this. This is just awesome. We've got that. You can come on in here, check out this scenery. You can see right down there where the caves are. And then we've got another, let's see, oop, oh, that's for that one. And then, beautiful, look at this, guys. Wheelchair ramp right there. And then you can come out, and come out here all on this big, beautiful, open area here. Now, unfortunately, they were just telling me that the uh, trail down to the caves will never, never be wheelchair accessible, but at least you can get out here and see it a little bit closer. Very cool. And we are at an elevation of 6,690 feet. It doesn't seem to be bothering Scott and I too much at this point. And maybe we have taken it slow enough this time to uh, acclimate a little bit better. So, all right, I wanted to show you guys that in case you are uh, wheelchair bound and needed that information. I'm gonna go back in and I'll do a couple little uh, pictures of what's inside the visitor center for you, that, you guys that won't be able to ever make it here. And then we're gonna get on that trail. Well, we've got some fur keys here. We've got mole deer, bison, black bear, this striped skunk, heck, pronghorn, and a few others. Well, we all know what this one is. Ooh, you know what? I had no idea, but skunk is, it's really soft. Wow. Oh, and this would be, I'm sure, the bison. I would think so. And let's see. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm. Oh, number seven. I had that right. Javelin. 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 What? How do you guys say this word? It's a javelin. Oh, a javelin. Yeah. Oh. Feel the skunk. It's like so soft. I had no idea. Oh, I expected it to be like very coarse. coarse. Yeah. Oh, this one's coarse. What that one is. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Yeah, this is um, when the average snowfall season was was January through February, and then snow melts February, creek flows in March. The drought was April, May, June. Then creek flows July, August, rainy season September, and then October, November were drought. Oh, yep. Wow. And they had to contend to all of that to survive. I know, let's see. 
You know the yeah. snow melt and then... Wow. Look at this is how they live. There. This is really interesting oh. here. The, the, he is called One Crazy Dude. One right? Crazy Dude. And then this is... On the cliff, he is that other crazy dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so see, they, they um, had like homes here and like little villages, and they, I guess they were the workers that would do all the climbing and pass down the logs right. and stuff. And Wow. And the creator of this diorama, uh, this is a little biography of him. Look at you, man. See, look at they're waving at each other. Yeah, that guy. What did they say? Oh, you're. <laughs> See how the, the small man there is waving to the man across this way? He's like, jump, jump. jump. Yeah, too bad they uh, couldn't have built a bridge for themselves here. I'm, you know what? I'm thinking they probably did have some kind of bridge. Yeah. That'd be the smart thing to do. All right, well, if you get in, in here, get a chance to come here, there's a little TV uh, program over here that you can check out and some other stuff, but we are going to go get on that trail and get going. So now when we go down into the canyon on the trail, how many dwellers were down there, do you know? How many lived down there at one time, or was it? Um, we don't actually know. Um, I mean, in the room, it was kind of small for the space where they're living. Right. So it just kind of depends on how, you know, how big the family was. Over time, they kind of build, become bigger because more families members got added, they can be more room for storage, you know, things like that. So we're not actually sure. We actually don't even know what they actually call themselves. So now that really? in Spanish means without water. Oh, okay. That's it, that's all we know. Wow. We don't even know what mix of natives they were. Wow. Okay. And then how long does the trail take to get do the whole down by the dwellings and stuff? What is the average walk time? Do you know? Uh, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour. It probably takes a little bit longer than that coming up because it's hard to go okay. stairs. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we know that. Yeah. Right on. Okay. And what was your name? Joseph. Joseph. Oh, we've got a son, Joseph. Thank you so much for the information. All right. We'll see you guys when we get back up here then. Do what? So he did tell you that there are two Spanish words in Sinagua. It's sin and agua. Sin and agua. That means without water. Yeah, that's, that's what how he, they farm. Right. And he was saying that they don't really even know the name of the tribe that was here. Right. Okay. So we were just uh, we were just right over there, you guys. Now look at the view on this side. Wow. It's not the walk down; it's the walk up. Oh yeah. Right. It's the walk well, up that will get us. Yeah, I agree, Aj. I think it looks kind of dangerous to be living in the side of a cliff. <laughs> well, there's two dangers, either, either living this way or having to worry about mountain lions and bears and stuff. Yeah, that's true. That's why they lived on this side that, of the mountains. Right, and that one section down there, it's like there's one, two, three, four that I can see, and then five, six, seven, almost like eight areas. Yeah, because it wraps around. Right. So neat. And then there's some directly above. There, every once in a while you look over and you can see more areas. Yeah, look at that big area way over there. Now, could you imagine raising teenagers here? They'd just go find their own little cliff and build their own little house and hide from you. <laughs> I, I doubt they were that way back then because they didn't have the internet. Oh, teen the, teenagers uh, have always been teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no change in that. See, here it is right here. <laughs> they were probably well-behaved teenagers, though. <laughs> There's the canyon. Oh, yeah. You were here. All right, we better get going. Okay, yeah, let's do this. Caution. Going down is optional. Returning is mandatory. You are at 6,690 feet elevation. Consider your physical condition before attempting this trail. Yeah, it goes straight down. Yeah, it's a steep one mile, drops 185 vertical feet into Walnut Canyon. 
A staircase with 273 stair steps. The loop trail has additional 190 stair steps. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how far we make it. No, that's what they were also saying is that if you're afraid of heights, you probably would not want to take this route. I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about the people who lived here. You couldn't be scared uh, of heights if you lived on the edge yeah. of a cliff. If you were born here, I guess you would just be accustomed to it. Get used to it, yeah. Yeah, but they do say if you're afraid of heights, not to take this walk. Maybe their feet were like goats. And you definitely want to hang on to the railing. <laughs> For sure. amazing how this tree can grow out of rock. Yeah. I mean, where to find any dirt? Well, that's what it was saying on the one placket that I was reading. There. Yeah. They, they've been accustomed to not having to use much dirt to grow. Right. Wow. Yep, we're going to be taking it slow. Do you hear him breathing? And he yes, I know. Out. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden. Can you imagine people living back in there actually had? No, wouldn't that be horrible? That would be horrible. Haja was just saying, wouldn't it be horrible if you had, back then, people living out, out here had vertigo. <laughs> yeah. They just call that one crazy brain. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like crazy yeah, brain yesterday when my <laughs> everything was flipping around. Wow, it's gorgeous. Look at this. That's pretty yeah. too. Yeah. Whoa, that's a scary rock, huh? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's just hanging by Yeah. <laughs> not much. Well, it's really kinda not. No, it's just leaning. Slides off that thing, touches somebody. Wait till I can find them. <laughs> and then again, think how they got all this concrete down. Alright, we're here. Yay, we're almost to the bottom, guys. Yeah, it's just teetering there. Okay. Made it down to the flatter parts. Wow. Did you get the map? Okay, there's some on the back side over there. We go this way, right, Audrey? No. Is that how you come back? It looks all the way around here. Island Trail to the right. Yeah. This, um, this walk is around, the, and it's all the cave bones here. Oh. It's so worth coming down those stairs. So they used to have fires in there. You can see the soot markings. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Well, the perfect shelter. It says, for each room tucked into this rock alcove, nature provided the back wall, floor, and leak-proof ceilings. No ex excavation was needed. Builders simply laid up unshaped Unshaped blocks of limestone for side walls and close the front and open their doorway to the canyon. Here only two walls remain. Yeah, it's pretty cool what they used to do. Really neat. Hmm. 
Oh, and then they had neighbors. <laughs> They're all one big neighbor. Big, yeah, big one city. big family. Oh, yeah, this one has the walls still in the front. Here's your problem solving. Oh, they did. See, this is the front. They were all closed in before. Huh? Yeah, how cool is that? So oh, this is how it used to look with the and then it was all closed in with doors. Yeah. So they did use some kind yep, of fabric. That was skin, yep. Yep. Yeah, very tight quarters, but you know what? That's not any uh smaller than what Scotty and I and well I just got a little bit more a bigger room than we do, but not a whole lot more. Y'all fit five people in your truck camper. Yeah. yeah. I'd be happy with this little room. Go in my room. Now that's bigger than Carolyn's, and you can almost stand up in that one. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. But if you stood up too quick, and you were a little taller like me, you might get a bunk. Luckily, <laughs> I think they were like all what do you call short people. <laughs> You can see very prominent where they had their fire come out, you know, the soot is just thick right in here. Very cool. It would have had, boy, I don't know, you'd really have to have some good airflow to have a fire in here like this. I think they had vents in certain ones. Yeah, they'd have to have done something really cool. See, hon, you can live anywhere. Oh, you don't even have to have wheels. That's right. <laughs> well, this is kind of explaining the life on the shady side. It says the twists and turns of Walnut Canyon create a patchwork of sun and sh shadow to which plants and animals respond. On this side of the island, you walk in shaded forest among ponderosa pines and moisture-loving Douglas fir trees. Just across the canyon, desert dwellers like junipers and yucca grow on hot, dry, sunny slopes. Hmm. How many different plants and animals have you seen already? Chances are... All wood have been used in some way for food, clothing, shelter, or tools, and utilitarian, utilitarian objects. Hmm. Well, that would be kind of fun for you guys to look through the video and see what, how many uh, items you guys have found as we're walking along. We're almost halfway around. Yeah, a lot of little sitting areas where you can rest for a this minute. This is not a sitting area. This is called a rock. <laughs> the rock. <laughs> it's a sitting area. <laughs> where probably many, many of uh, ancient people sat there. I'm sure this canyon's a lot deeper than 800 years ago. Yeah. When they were here. Seems like it. Yeah. Woo! Be careful, guys. <laughs> what did you say, Mr. Thompson? I said, you tell us to be careful, but we're looking where we're walking. You're like, oh, 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 oh I'm filming. <laughs> I already told these guys I was going to try to be careful and watch where I was walking because I was filming. <laughs> Maybe Scotty should be in front of you. That way, if you trip and fall, you can just fall on Yeah, take me down. It's definitely a lot cooler down under these uh, cliffs. Yeah, this would be the one I'd want. Nice, nice area over you. If the water came, it wouldn't be coming inside. Yeah. A bigger area. I mean, because you could see that it wouldn't be too hard to sit here and, you know, and, but heck, they didn't have iron probably back then. They probably just had, um, pulled that rock out. You know, no. Yeah, that one. Okay, so here's something interesting because I was wondering about the pattern on this, uh, 
wall over here. So that's... Notice the pattern of di diagonal lines. I, I can't hardly read it because my eyes are so blurry. Notice the patterns of diagonal lines or cross bedding in the sandstone visible directly across the canyon and shown here. The preserved sand layers recorded changing winds, oh, wind direction. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Yeah, because it's all sandstone, so yeah. it's not like it's granite. Well, I thought it was camp. it was done from water. It looks like water. Oh, I would I would say both. Oh. You know, wouldn't you? I mean, I would think water and the wind blowing the water around. Right. Yeah. Wait, there's a big cave over there. Pretty. <laughs> Gamble Oak. Years ago, it was underwater anyways, yeah. Yeah. Because it was a sandy shore. Oh. The gravity and compaction turned it into stone. See, what ha the reason it breaks like this is it rains and water gets like behind this, and then when it freezes, it, it blows it, it apart. It yeah. expands it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, look at this. It's really neat. I mean, that, there's their stairway, you know, like their step in. Yeah. Wow. Look how thick the mud is. On this one, it's really thick. They probably didn't want to listen to the neighbor. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if that was uh, soundproof. Yeah, so you could probably knock on it. I don't know. I keep seeing these numbers. This one is seven three seven D, and then there was one down there as well. I don't know what they mean. I'll have to find out. That's what they ate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that would be just a little dessert. He's a little tiny guy. <laughs> oh, they don't scare me. I had those as pets. Yeah. Well, he's like, what do you mean, pet? <sighs> oh, he's cute. Cute little fellow. Hello, guy. Watch out. Well, yeah, where there's lizards and snakes. Oh, cool. Careful. It goes up in there, but it does stop. Maybe that was the bathroom. You'd have to be awful skinny to get in that bathroom. <laughs> right. So it was a um oh, yeah. a, a dual stall bathroom. Yeah. Stall. <laughs> Definitely not a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> this really gives you a good idea of uh, what they had going on here. It's just incredible. And obviously the size of their doors, you can see they were not overly large people, so Obviously, there was no Burger King around, no McDonald's around. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, they probably stayed really healthy going up and down these these walls. Yeah, and I'm sure the smallness of the door was also to keep predators out, wouldn't you think? Oh, and to keep heat in, yeah. Right, right. So don't cross over into anything that uh, has oh, wow. the signs this in it. Well yeah, and you can really see. Now, there's those numbers again. So these must be their uh, markings for maybe archaeology. This one says uh, 739i, I think, is, or maybe 3. Do you see it over there, Ash? Uh -huh, it says 7391. 1, okay. Yeah, so that must just be their cat. Look at all the sit. Yeah, I know. It's, like, amazing. Did you see the escape hatches for the sit? I mean, the smoke? No. Yep. Right here. This is these are more intact here. Yeah. See? Okay, so they did. They had a That's vent. Where the smoke came out. Yeah. Vent system going on. Oh. Not right there. No. It's dark in there. Yeah. No, but once you get the camera like 
in, just don't go in. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Ow. Ooh. Oh, of course somebody has been in here because I can, I don't have my glasses on, but hopefully I'm getting you guys something. Yeah, you can see it, see? Oh, there, if you cover that. Yeah. Wow. Oh, look at that. Undisturbed. Wow. It was really dark in there. I know, Because right? from out here you can't see anything. Well, they had fire and stuff going in there. Yeah. God, I couldn't imagine breathing in all that I stuff. know, right? That's what I was thinking back there when we were talking about it. They all got the exact size rooms, like they were well, measured. Like this one is. This one's actually big. Well, this one might have been the. Yeah, the maybe this was the uh, parents. Yep. Kind of, <laughs> yep. Okay, so maybe this is the living room, and those are the bedrooms. Could be. Maybe this is the day room. The day room, yeah. Oh, there's some more numbers. Where? In the corner over there. Oh yeah. See, we can go in this one. No, yeah, you can go in this one. Let's see. It's neat that they allow you to come in. Yeah, this is a huge one. Yeah. I know it's kind of like the same. Every single one is the same, but it's just so neat. Mm -hmm. Look at the way that the rock is cracked there too. Wow. Yeah, these bigger rooms must have been where they did their cooking and maybe uh, everybody kind of hung out in these areas. <laughs> From afar that kind of looked like a spooky face. Oh, yeah. Wow. Now, my question is, where did they get all the water to make the mud? There's a creek down there. Is there a creek down there? Yeah, and like I said, I'm sure um, this canyon wasn't this deep. It's been 800 years. Yeah, that's true. Really cool. I was looking. Look at this crack. I wouldn't trust that. Yeah, that's what I was just look, showing them in the other one. You can see where it's, it's sunk like two. This side is sunk like yeah. two inches. I'd be like, nope. Yeah, that's what I was just showing them on the other side. The big crack in the rock. <laughs> the lady sh crazy. over there showed me an ephedrine plant. Is that what it's called? You know, they, they make Sudafed for congestion and stuff. Oh. There was actually a plant growing. Oh, really? Yeah, an oh. ephedrine plant or something. Wow. thought I'd never seen one before. They probably had it down. Well, oh, we are oh, definitely starting to go yeah. back up a little bit. Oh, there's a... Uh, Walnut. Oh, yeah. A walnut tree. Looks dry and dead, though. Yeah. <laughs> Arizona walnut. So, you know, I bet they have, they will, they planted a lot of their stuff. Yeah. Look, it's Mormon tea, ephedra. So, this is what they make ephedrine out of? Yeah, that's what we thought was scotch broom. So it says, ephedra stimulates the brain, increases heart rate, constricts blood vessels, and dilates um, bronchial tubes. Bronchial oh. tubes. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. It says, do you think people indulged in a um, vitalizing tonic made from the, the stem? <laughs> or oh. used it for medical purposes? <laughs> Probably both. Yeah. Humans are kind of funny that way. Yeah, well, that's what it says. Today, <laughs> it's used for both. Yeah. yeah. How long is that? Oh, it's a little... Uh... Oh, that's kind of creepy. Creepy! Okay, well, now it's life on the sunny side. There you go. I thought about you had ten guys, and let's say it wasn't that deep. You know, you could just kind of, you know, huck it uphill and huck it down here. It's a totally different lifestyle <laughs> on the sunny side than the shady side.
Okay, Aja, what did you say it was? This is the community sharing land. And Scott, what did you say it was? I think it's the red light district. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's side. probably is, is a community sharing land. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, if you see this one without walls, I yeah. believe I had read something that this used to be st like a storage. Oh, okay. Because it's cooler. Right. There are vegetables and stuff. Right. Maybe their type of cellar. Right. Love yeah, they've got there's some there's kind of berry here. That is growing in here. Oh. Look, there's lettuce growing in here. That is a lettuce, isn't it? Yeah, that is a lettuce. And um, so they must have had seeds in here at one time. Oh. oh, that's what you would do. Sure, you would have the seeds for the next year. Yeah, store all oh. your seeds. Wow. So what happened to a lot of these caves is they were vandalized. People came out on uh, the early 18 or the late 1800s and uh, looking for whatever little items they could find. So like this one was all taken apart, digging for it. And then uh, in 19. 15, Woodrow Wilson proclaimed this place a monument, and uh, so now you're not allowed to take anything away, which is a good thing. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. That kind of shows you picture, pictures of proud people as they were destroying it. <laughs> King lives the big room. <laughs> he got the best yep, if they had only known what they were destroying. Look at that, because it just looks so well done. Yeah. You think this is the king's room? He's like, I'm closer to the staircase. <laughs> well, not to mention it just has more yeah. like green plants and. Well, it's out of the sun too. It's right. not they're not being baked, you know. Because on the view. sunny side, there were all those plants, but they were all dried up. They weren't all lush and green. Right. There's just a lot of plant variety here. This is the side I would there, have to uh, live on. Is the shady side. You can look at this one. Yeah. There's all different types of plants in here. Yep. Which side would you guys live on? I'd have a condo on both. <laughs> <laughs> I want the grassy side. Yeah, me too. Okay, what was that, Osh? It's rock mat. They collected it for ceremonies. Oh. This was the side that they must have come to to get it. Yeah. On the shady side. <laughs> Woo! Holy smokey. Hot you! Boink, 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 boink. Might make that rock over there come down. I thought I seen life down there moving, but I <laughs> what's up? All right, well, we've made it to the end. Or the beginning of the, the descent up. Well, the descent would be the climb down. All right. Ascend. Ascend. Up. Is that ascending up? Well, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a crack. Big crack. Yeah, here is the stairs. Now time to ascend up. That looks like a face right there. Oh, yeah. There's a few things I can show you right now. Oh, okay. It's just kind of off my post. Okay. I need to go back over there. I don't have to pass. Okay. I'll pull over on this side and let you go by. And if you're interested, let you know. <laughs> what was your name, sir? Bill. Hi, Bill. Okay, he's going to show us a few things. If you look down there, see that wavy rock down at the bottom half? Yes. Those are sand dunes that could covered over by the Kaibab Sea. Before the dinosaurs, when it was still Pangaea, just the one continent. So you have five million years of dunes climbing on top of dunes, and 15 million years of the sea bottom building up. Oh. And as the sea bottom built up, you get different layers. And the two layers that are most deeply eroded are where the cliff dwellings are. And right on top of the sandstone, you see a tan layer in little overhangs. There's a layer of clay. Oh. Those are clay mines where they were scraping out clay for the pottery, the mortar, and the plaster. Oh. And have you ever seen a plant growing upside down? No. Well, oh. yes, actually. Uh, 
Oh my okay, goodness. I've seen, we saw the root, we saw the underneath of a plant. There you go. Awesome. Plant growing Here's up. Wow. The water pours down from up there onto the boulder here. And it's worn away the limestone. It's worn away the limestone, left a bed of sponges. So all these lumps here are fossils of sponges. And you can see what are probably barnacle shells. So little shells oh, are scattered Oh, wow, around. I see that. But a key to barnacles. understanding why the people lived here is the gray on the canyon walls. In the rooms you have soot from fires from the smoke. But this is blue-green algae. Oh, it's the same don't... thing you get on asphalt shingles if you get a lot of snow or rain. But it gives you an idea of how much water came to them. Wow. Back in the day they had roofs that never leaked. Didn't have to repair the walls and rain, then they could just put out the clay pots, catch the water coming down. Okay. And blue-green algae uh, is considered to be a living fossil. It's been around for at least three billion years. Yeah. Cyanobacterium, it's one of the first living things. It's what started putting oxygen in the atmosphere. And if you look below the sign, see little branch-like or stick-like things right down there? When that oh, was yeah. the muddy bottom of the sea, worms or clams or whatever burrowed. And the little burrows filled up with mud turned stone. And all before the dinosaurs. Wow, how so, interesting. Any questions? So they didn't go to the bottom of the canyon to get water then? Well, I'm not an archaeologist. I mm -hmm. can speculate as much as I want. Right. But there's a seasonal creek. This is the desert southwest. They had to store a lot of water. They had big 30, 40 gallon urns. And it's not hard to get to the bottom if you know the way. So when the creek is flowing, you fill the urns. And when you're going out for the day, you stop down there, you fill your gourd, you drink your fill, you go out, do what you're going to do. Before you come home, you stop down there, drink your fill, fill your gourd, maybe carry up. But Flagstaff, uh, we average about 100 inches of snow a year, and we get another 8, 10, eight, ten inches of rain. So a lot of water came to them. Right. Oh, wow. And if you folks are interested, there's some things I can show you right here. It's very yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Deaf <laughs> worth stopping and listening. Thank you, Bill. Bill, thank you so much. Appreciate, Appreciate it very much. Well, that was uh, well worth stopping and listening to Bill. Uh, you don't have to walk anywhere with him. You just stop right there at the uh, end of the trail. So that's kind of neat to get a little bit of a perspective of uh, the it's things that the work. Place. Yeah. Incredible. All right. Now we've got to go back up. You want me to carry the camera now? I can do it. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank you. Wow, guys. We are back in the truck. That was an amazing hike. Beautiful. That was so worth those stairs climbing back up. <laughs> well, what they don't tell you is it's 270 roughly down, but oh. then there's another 190 after that. Right. So. <laughs> Very well um, worth stopping. I, If I had to give this a 1 to 5 star, I would definitely give it... 4.8? 4.8. <laughs> um, only because I wish that everyone could get down there somehow and see the whole thing. Um, but unfortunately, the wheelchair ex access is only right to that one area that we showed you. If it was, uh, if you were, sorry, I'm very hot. If you were able to go all the way around, it would just be superb. But anyways, what a great walk. Great hike. It's definitely worth going there and uh, just at least going out on the balcony part. I mean, you can see all the caves. You just can't get up close and jump in them if, right. you, if you don't go down the uh, the rocks. And Bill was really a great guy to stop and, and uh, listen to. He's very knowledgeable and um, we did notice at the very end, I did not know that you could do a tour. So that's something if you go to this area, if you're interested in that, maybe check at the front desk. Um, Joseph or one of the other guys in, at the front could probably help you figure that out. Or maybe you can go online and figure it out. Anyways, we are heading to Flagstaff. Aja has some stuff she wants to do there, and then not sure where we're going from that point. We'll take you guys with us wherever we go. All right, hope you enjoyed that.